Hey folks, today we're going to be talking about Cloud SQL on Google Cloud. I'm going to show you everything you need to know about setting up a Postgres database with a public facing IP address. I'll go through the whole process of setting up the database, and then I'll show you how you can connect to it directly from your computer using a tool like Azure Data Studio or dBeaver. And then I'll show you how to connect to that database from a .NET API that you're running locally on your computer. And then finally, I'll show you how you can deploy that API to Google Cloud Run and how you can connect to it from there. So let's go ahead and get started. So for this demo, I'm gonna start with a brand new project in Google Cloud. And the reason I'm starting with a brand new project is because I wanna make sure that I go through all the same steps that you might go through if you're doing this for the first time. I'm here in Google Cloud, I'm on the dashboard of my new project, and the first thing we need to do is go create the database. So I'll go to Cloud SQL, and then I'm gonna create an instance. I'm gonna choose Postgres, and you can see here it's saying in order to create an instance, you need to enable a Compute Engine API first, so I'll go ahead and enable that. Once that's done, it'll open up this page and we can create our instance. First, enter an instance ID, mine will be Cloud SQL Demo, and then you need to create a password. So this password is the default password for your database, so basically this is the password that you would use to log in essentially as the sysadmin account, or in this case for Postgres, it's the Postgres account. Then you can pick the database version, whether or not you want it to be production or development. I'm not gonna go through all the different options that you have when setting up this database. This video is more focused on the connection and not the actual instance itself. One thing we do need to specify is the public or private IP address. For this video, I'm gonna show you all about the public IP. My next video will probably be about how to do the private IP. So for now, I'm gonna leave public IP checked. I will not have a private IP on this one. I think that's all I need to do, so I'll go ahead and create that instance. Now, if you go into your instance and you go to the overview page, you can see here two new pieces of information. There's a public IP address and a connection name. This public IP address is the way that you can connect to your database. The first way I'll show you how to do this is from your local computer. The way that you would connect to your database from your local computer would be using a tool such as dBeaver or Azure Data Studio. And all you really have to do is you put in this public IP address as a server name, your username and password, and you connect to it. But if you try that with a new instance like this, it's not going to work. And that's because by default, Cloud SQL is going to restrict the inbound IPs to the databases. And so there's two ways around that. And the first way is by using the Google Cloud Console. So you can go into there and you can add your IP address as an authorized network, and that will let you connect. And the other way is using the Cloud SQL Proxy. And the Cloud SQL Proxy is a tool that you run from your local computer. And you can authenticate a couple different ways, but basically it uses IIM inside of Google Cloud to determine who you are and whether or not you have access to connect to this database. The first way I'll show you is using an authorized network. The way that you add an authorized network to your instance is by going to Connections and then Networking. And if you scroll down just a little bit, here you'll see Authorized Networks. And if you click Add Network, you can add in a network with your IP address. So you can put in a network name and then your IP address. And one important thing about this IP address is that this is your public facing IP address of where you are. So for example, like I'm in my house, this isn't my computer's IP address, this is the computer that my house has to my internet provider. And the best way I've found of finding what that IP address is, is if you just go into Google and you Google what is my IP address, it'll show you right there on the screen. I'm obviously not gonna show you because I don't want people having my public IP address, but you put that IP address in here, you click done, and then you can connect. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera. Okay, so I've added my IP address as an authorized network. I've gone back to the overview page, and now we need to connect to the database. In this demo, I'm gonna use Azure Data Studio. And what you wanna do is change your connection type to Postgres. And the server name is that public IP of your database instance. So if you go back into the overview, this is the IP here, copy this, put that in the server name. The username by default is gonna be Postgres. And then you put in your password and you connect. Now I'm connected, you can see here it was successful. I can see the different databases that are inside this instance. So this is working. This is a great way if you have a small team or even if it's just yourself. If it's a bigger team, this kind of does get cumbersome because you have to add in a bunch of IPs in there. It's also not the most secure and Google doesn't recommend doing it this way because you have those authorized networks set up and you're essentially opening up your database to more vulnerabilities, which isn't a good thing. So the alternative way of doing this is using the Cloud SQL Proxy. And when you do the Cloud SQL Proxy, you essentially log in as yourself, and as long as you have access to go in and see the database in Google Cloud Console, then you also have the ability to connect to it. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna take out my authorized network, and I'll show you how to set up the Cloud SQL Proxy. So here are the docs for the Cloud SQL Proxy and how to connect to a Cloud SQL instance using that proxy. 
I already have this tool installed, but I'm gonna show you a few of the important steps that you need to do to make sure that this is gonna work for you. So first, if you scroll down here, there's a section for downloading it. Make sure you choose the operating system that you have, and then you just run these commands. And if you scroll down a little bit further, there are steps for how to start the proxy. And in here, it explains different ways that you can set it up. And I know from setting this up a day or two ago when I was prepping for this video that if you do this step first, it's not gonna work because you're not authenticated. And so a little bit further down here, there are options for authenticating Cloud SQL Proxy. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. You can point to a credentials file. You can set up an access token. You can put in an environment variable that has information about who you are. And the way I like to do it, though, is using the gcloud CLI. And I have this tool installed, too, so I'm not going to go through all these steps. But here's the instructions for this. I'll put a link to this down below. You just need to choose what your operating system is, follow these instructions, install the right thing. And also make sure you run this init command. That makes it a lot easier to do stuff later on. After you do the gcloud init, make sure you run this. Uh, you can run this command right here. And that will set up everything you need for those application default credentials to be on your computer so that all these things work from here on out. Okay, so once you have gcloud installed and once you have the proxy installed, now you can actually run the proxy so you can connect your database without that authorized network. And so right here, there's all the instructions on how to start the proxy. It gives you a little bit of information about different options. I'm going to go down to step four, which is actually starting the proxy. And this is the command that you would run to start it. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to my database to get this connection name. So if you go to the overview page, this connection name right here is the one you want to copy. So copy that, go back to the docs. If you click the little pencil, you can actually paste that right in there. And then you can copy that whole command. Then all you have to do is open up a terminal, go to the folder where you have Cloud SQL Proxy installed, and then run that command. You can see it's going to authorize with application default credentials. Those are credentials that you set up during that gcloud init process. And you can see now it is now listening on IP address 127.0.0.1 on port 5432. And the way this works is you're essentially connecting to the proxy on your computer. That proxy is authenticated with Google Cloud. And so it's going to relay all of your information to Google Cloud to that database instance. And so now when you connect to the database from your local computer, you no longer use that public IP address, you use 127.0.0.1. So I'm gonna go back into Azure Data Studio. I'm going to delete this connection that we just created. I'm gonna do a new connection. And now the server name is 127.0.0.1. And the username and password is the same as before. And connect. Now you can see it's still here. These databases are still here. It's the same database, it's just a different IP address because now you're using the proxy. And this is a more secure way of connecting the database when you have a public IP. You're not setting up authorized networks, which are you know one more way that they can get in your database. So that was step one. <laughs> that was setting up the database and connecting to it from your local computer. Now the next step is how do you run an application and connect to it? So I'm gonna do a demo. I've got a really small teeny tiny .NET API set up, and I'm gonna show you how to connect to that from your local computer running that API. I'll just really quick show this API I have one entity called vehicle, and I have a controller with one endpoint to get all the vehicles in the database. And then lastly, I have a database context. The only thing in here that's really that important that I want to point out is how I'm doing the connection string. So I am pulling the connection string from an environment variable called connection string, and then I'm using that to set up my PostgreSQL connector. When I run this locally, this connection string, I actually have this set up in the launch settings. So if you go into launch settings, I'm using this private SQL profile that's right here. And I've added a new connection string. And this connection string is pointing to that local IP address because I'm on the proxy. And it's connecting to this database. I need to go and actually set this up really quick. I'll do that behind the scenes. But this is a great way of doing connection strings as environment variables when you're developing locally. If you're interested in how I set this database up, this is the commands that I ran. Um, I just created the database, created the new table, inserted a couple records into it. Super basic. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and just make sure it works and can pull that information out of that table. So I'll expand vehicles, try it out execute, and there you go. It's pulling these two records out of the table. So now we know our proxy works. We know that our API can connect to it. And essentially we're set up in a way that we can develop our stuff locally now. You can be working on your stuff on your local computer, developing your API, and you can still use that database that's in the cloud. And now the third thing I wanna show you is how you can take this API and how you can deploy it to Cloud Run and then how to configure Cloud Run so that your API can correctly connect to that SQL instance. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about the process of creating the Docker image and pushing that up to Cloud Run. I may do that as a separate video, so if you're interested in that, let me know. But I'm going to build the image on my local computer. I'm going to push that up to Cloud Run. I'm going to create the Cloud Run instance, and then I'll show you the important parts about how to connect from Cloud Run to Cloud SQL. 
I've created that Docker image and I've pushed that up to the container registry in Google Cloud. So you can see it here, I called it SQL test. So now I'll hop over to Cloud Run and show you how to set that up. I wanna go ahead and create a new service. I'm going to choose container registry and I'll choose that container that I just pushed up. I'll leave the service name as Cloud SQL test and I'll leave the region selected as US Central One in Iowa. This is also where I put my database. So that's something you wanna keep in mind when you're creating these is try to put the database close or in the same region as where your application will be run from. But then we wanna expand this container and networking section and we wanna do two things. We need to add the environment variable that we use for the connection string. And then we want to add a Cloud SQL connection. So the first thing I'll do is I'll add that environment variable. The name for that is connection string. And I'm gonna go grab the value of that from my API. So here's that connection string from my API and I still have the host as 127.0.0.1. And this is not correct. You need to change this. And so I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and go to Cloud SQL Connections and say Add Connections. Go ahead and enable that Cloud SQL Admin API. And you hit this dropdown and you can see that it's already picking up that instance. So the instance that we created is in the same project. And so it's gonna show up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. And this instance name here is the one we need to use in our connection string. So I'm gonna really quick hop back over to the Cloud SQL. I'll copy it from here. And then I'll put it right here as the host. And when I did this the first time, I set this up and I spent so long trying to figure out why my API wasn't connecting when I used this as my host name. I'll put a link to this down below, but in the documents, there's like one more and very important piece we have to change for that host name in the connection string so that this works correctly. This is a documentation on how to connect Cloud Run to a Postgres SQL instance. And if you scroll down here just a little bit, the instance name is the one we just put in, but you have to add this slash Cloud SQL slash in front of it. So I'm going to copy that and go back into here and copy that in. Hopefully this helps some of you if you have the same problem. I think now we're all set up. We have our environment variable correct. We have our Cloud SQL instance set up as a connection. Let's go ahead and create this. All right, that deployment was successful. So let's go ahead and go make sure this is working. So I'll go to my Swagger endpoint. I'll go to vehicles, execute, and it works. All right, so I think that's all the main things you need to know now about a Cloud SQL instance with a public IP address and how to connect to it in various ways. I really hope this was helpful for some people out there. If you did find it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. If there's anything you're doing different or that I did wrong, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear people's input on this. And thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.